this is Vanessa with the latest Tazen news, and here they are. Brazil continues its support to Timor-Leste on economic development. The ambassador of Brazil in Timor-Leste, Mauricio Medeiros de Assis, said the purpose of the meeting with Timor-Leste's President of Republic, José Ramos Horta, is to discuss plan and main programs, especially in the Timor-Leste future's economic development. I was received in audience with the President of the Republic. We about... Today, the audience with the President, we talked about the possibility of bringing Brazilian investments in the industrial area to Timor-Leste, more specifically in the medicine manufacturing sector. This is the concern that we have to the President. It will not only improve the health area, but also in the economic development of the country. Building a factory, yes, the most basic medicines, and at the same time to serve the public health and also for export. Mauricio added, Timor-Leste and Brazil needs to strengthen the relationship and continue to work together in the future, especially in priority areas such as education and health, and to provide proper support to all Timorese in the country. Yes, we have demands in Timor-Leste in the different areas. We are about to try projects negotiated in Timor-Leste in education sector, a project that will soon be marked by the establishment of the Masters in Education at the UNTL, an agroecology project also with UNTL at the Peace Center, which involves the agriculture community in technical agroecology to increase production on small properties. Brazil is currently provides scholarship aids to 370 students at the undergraduate and master's level. And based on the plan in the future, Brazil will offer opportunities for Timorese in the educational sector to continue their studies in Brazil. Indonesia officially allowed free tourist visa entry for Timor-Leste. On February 13, 2023, Timor-Leste's Prime Minister Taormatan Ruak made a courtesy visit to Indonesia to meet Indonesian President Joko Widodo and Indonesia decided to grant free visa access to Timorese who wanted to visit Indonesia. This free visa access offered specially for Timorese national who wish to travel to Indonesia as tourists with a duration of length one month. The ambassador of Indonesia in Timor-Leste, Okto Dorinus Manik, explained this to the press at the Indonesia's Republic Embassy in Palapasu, Dili. Indonesia has implemented a free visa visit policy for citizens of Timor-Leste. This is one of the parts of strengthening our bilateral relations between Indonesia and Timor-Leste. This policy was taken into account by seeing the conditions of the COVID-19 pandemic is improved. Apart from Timor-Leste, the free visa access is also given to nine other ASEAN member countries. It means there is no other countries. We also need to remind everyone, Timor-Leste citizens, that this free visa visit requires a visitor to declare a six-month valid passport, and everyone should aware this, since this is based on the international relations rule. In addition to that, the proof of completed vaccination certificates needs to be presented as well. However, this free visa visit applies applies only for 30 days long and cannot be extended. So, for example, someone wants to study in Indonesia, that person cannot use this free visa access since this is only a tourist visa. Concerning the private vehicle drive by the citizens of Timor-Leste to travel to Indonesia from Mota Island border, the ambassador said the previous rule remain applied and the payment based on the existing rate. This free visa access policy Indonesia had offers to Timor-Leste is valid for all type of passport, such as diplomatic passport, service passport, and common passport. Timor-Leste and Indonesia continues to strengthen bilateral relationship through the establishment of four agreements. Indonesia's Republic Ambassador to Timor-Leste, Okto Norinus Manik, holds a meeting with the national media on Tuesday to extend the information on the visit of Timor-Leste's Prime Minister Taormatan Ruak to Indonesia. Manik added, during Taormatan Ruak's visit to Indonesia, there has been signing of four memorandum of understanding, as well as the establishments of free market at the border, higher level education, meteorology, climatology and geophysics industry, IT and also elections training support for the Timor-Leste's National Election Committee. Perdana Menteri Timor-Leste, Meeting between Indonesia's President Jokowi and the Prime Minister Tormatan Ruak resulted in the signing of four memorandums of understanding. The first MAU is a higher education, the second MAU is about human resource development and exchange of knowledge between the Indonesian General Election Commission and Timor-Leste National Election Committee. 
and the third memorandum of understanding is industrial cooperation and the fourth memorandum of understanding is the collaboration of meteorology climatology and geophysics expectedly the four mous can strengthen the cooperation between both countries and we also agreed that we will continue to improve our commitment to strengthen the bilateral relations between indonesia and timor leste bilateral indonesia timor leste Meanwhile, the Director General for Bilateral Affairs of Timor Leste's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Crisonio de Araujo, said among the four agreements that the Timorese and Indonesia signed, there are two new agreements and other two are the extended ones. Financial funding for these four agreements will be in both countries' charges, as technically both countries will be financing all activities that is linked to these agreements. And a crisis leaves Filipino farmers crying for change. Onion prices in the Philippines are now some of the highest in the world. After a shortage, sent prices skyrocketing, but local farmers say they are not benefiting from this and are worried about their future. Onion farmer John John Taberna from Bagabon said they are not against any importation, as long as it's done in a timely manner or when the local harvest is almost sold out. We are nervous because our harvest is all we rely upon, but then they import it at the same time. We're done. It's a loss. We are nervous. We will get nothing from what we have worked hard for, no matter how good the crop is. If prices are depressed, you won't make money. Patro Helano Briones, an economist at the Think Tank Philippines Institute for Development Studies, says food importation is necessary. Bahagi ang imports sa food security. So we're supposed to have that imports. Especially important yan sa im yung imports as a safety valve. Because we cannot deny that there will be local supply shocks, as I said, avian influenza, African swine fever, uh, typhoons, yan ang much more common. We can guarantee 19, 20 per year. And that's going to hit some of our agricultural uh, products. At the end of last year, the shortage hiked prices tenfold from eight months earlier to 700 pesos or $37.28 per kilogram in Manila markets. The exorbitant prices grabbed headlines and pushed food inflation to double-digit levels, prompting President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who is also the Agriculture Secretary, to eventually clear an emergency importation of up to 21,060 tons at the start of 2023 to bring prices down. The unsavory turn-off even highlights what government critics point to a chronic mismanagement of the Philippine agriculture sector that's causing distress and frustration among consumers and farmers. Indonesia to repatriate a lead drug trafficker to Italy. <laughs> Authorities said Indonesian authorities will repatriate alleged drug trafficker Antonio Strangio, an Italian and Australian dual national who was detained in Bali earlier this month, to Italy. Police Commissioner Angaito Hadiprobo told reporters Interpol issued a red notice for Strangio, 32, in 2016 over the sale of 160 kilograms of marijuana and linked to Italy's Drangheta Organized Crime Syndicate. The authorities said three Indonesian police officials will take Strangio to Italy, but they declined to provide further details on his flight plan due to safety reasons and so as not to inconvenience other passengers. Strangio was arrested in February 3, 2023 in Indonesia's resort island of Bali, which he was transiting on his way home to Australia. Myanmar parallel government asked United States for more sanctions funding for anti-junta forces. The parallel civilian government's foreign minister told Reuters that Myanmar's pro-democracy forces want the United States to issue stronger sanctions against the junta that seized power in the country two years ago and increase funding for pro-democracy forces. And another thing is that we still need uh, to get and to put um, the sanctions more and more because not enough yet. Not, not enough yet. At least we still need to put it MOGE, like because of the, we link that kind of sanction with the, the jet fuels or airstrikes are totally directly linking each other. So that is why that, that type of uh, targeted sanctions are still need to be done. She called for financial sanctions on the state-owned Myanmar Oil and Gas Corporation that would cut off a major source of foreign currency for the junta and reduce the military's access to aviation fuel to conduct strikes that have led to allegations of targeting civilians.
The State Department did not immediately respond to question about Zin Mar Ong's comment. Indonesian coffee companies seen the Hainan Free Trade Port for new opportunities. And Kapal Api Global is one of them. This An Indonesian coffee enterprise has eyed the Hainan Free Trade Port as a platform for offering new opportunities and promoting better development. Kapal Api Global is one of many Indonesian enterprises attending the Hainan FTP promotion conference held in Jakarta, and through the event, the enterprises has gained a deeper and more comprehensive understanding of Hainan. The enterprise plans to participate in the third China International Consumer Products Expo to be held in South China's Hainan province and show great interest in the dividends brought by the construction of the Hainan FTP. As the largest coffee enterprise in Indonesia, Kapalapi Global has deepened its cooperation with China in recent years. It set up a branch in Shanghai in 2017, participated in China International Import Expo in 2018, started to build a factory in East China's Zhejiang province in 2019, and put factory into operation in 2020. The third China International Consumer Products Expo will be held in Haikou, the capital of Hainan, from April 11 to 15. The expo will gather global high-quality consumer products and global buyers and sellers, creating opportunities for enterprises to share the Chinese market and for Chinese enterprises to go worldwide. China to continue working for peace in Ukraine. Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin at press briefing in Beijing said China is willing to work with all parties to continue the efforts to realize peace in Ukraine at an early date. The Ukraine crisis will mark its first anniversary in a few days. China will release a document on its position about political settlement to the Ukraine crisis. The document will reiterate President Xi's important proportions, which stress that the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries should be respected, the purposes and principles of the UN Charter should be upheld, the legitimate security concerns of all countries should be taken seriously, and all efforts conducive to all peaceful solution of the crisis should be supported. He added, China also call on efforts to guarantee the safety of civil nuclear facilities and oppose any attacks on nuclear power plants. China will also advocate joint efforts to oppose the use of biochemical weapons. China is willing to work with all parties to continue the efforts to realize peace in Ukraine. Japan requests emergency United Nations Security Council meeting over North Korean missiles. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said his country has requested that the United Nations Security Council hold an emergency meeting after North Korea launched a long-range ballistic missiles that landed in the sea of Japan's west coast. Since North Korea's ballistic missile launch follows yesterday, editor's note, correct date of launch was February 18, ICBM class, international ballistic missile class, ballistic missile launch, we are now requesting the UN Security Council to convene an emergency meeting. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno, the government's top spokesperson, said Japan had lodged a protest to North Korea over the launches on next Monday. According to the South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff, North Korea first fired a ballistic missile towards the sea of its east coast before conducting two military similar launches. And um, thank you very much, everyone, for having tuned in today. We'll see you again soon. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe and stay healthy.